everyone. Good morning. Good morning. Hello. Sorry about the little delay there. We're um we're just it's a bit breezy here and uh, things are things are a little bit blowing, but uh, we should be all right. Very warm well welcome to you all. Um, we are at, at St Michael's Church today, but we're in the garden. Um, Curate Louis, Vicar Laura, and it's lovely to be with you. And we also have Miranda, um, who's going to be preaching to us later from home. So. Uh, we're really happy to be here. We hope you can hear us all right. Um, and you might have to bear with us if it gets a little bit breezy. Hopefully it'll be fine. But we really wanted to come uh, live from here today um, because as you will know, many of you will know, we recently had a, a bit of a sad act of vandalism. Um, our fence was torn down and uh, we, um, we're hoping to have that repaired or in fact replaced soon. Um, but we wanted to let everyone know that uh, God is here with us and we uh, we love St Michael's and we love the Baltic Triangle. So we're gonna we're gonna be live here all morning, and uh, and uh, we're gonna start with using our autumn liturgy as we have been for the last few months. So I'll just leave a pause and then we'll get started. At the turn of the year and the turn of the leaf, we look back at those things that have flourished for a season but are now falling to the ground. But all, all that, that has, has been, been peace. peace. At the turn of the year and the turn of the leaf, we rejoice in nature's bounty and abundance, even as we are aware of waste, inequality, and injustice. But For all, all that, that is wisdom. At the turn of the year and the turn of the leaf, we draw closer together for warmth and company, as we look ahead to a season of cold and dormancy. But well, all, all that, that will, will be strength. strength. I'm hoping now we can go across to Miranda, who's going to light a candle for us. Hi, everyone. As we, light as, the, okay. <laughs> as we light this candle as a symbol of our faith and hope for our future as a parish, a people, a world, we trust in the alchemy of the Holy Spirit to bring her dream to life here amongst us. Gather your people, O oh God, that your dream for us may come true. Amen. Amen. And the collect for today. O oh God, whose blessed Son was manifested that he might destroy the works of the devil and make us the children of God and heirs of eternal life, grant us, we beseech thee, that having this hope, we may purify ourselves even as he is pure, that when he shall appear again with power and great glory, we may be like unto him in his eternal and glorious kingdom. Where with thee, O Father, and thee, O Holy Spirit, he liveth and reigneth, one God, now and forever. Amen. So our Bible reading. Our reading today is taken from the Gospel according to St. Matthew, chapter 25, verses 14 to 30. Jesus said, for it is as if a man going on a journey summoned his slaves and entrusted his property to them. To one he gave five talents, to another two, to another one, to each according to his ability. Then he went away. The one who had received the five talents went off at once and traded with them and made five more talents. In the same way, the one who had the two talents made two more talents. But the one who had received the one talent went off and dug a hole in the ground and hid his master's money. After a long time, the master of those slaves came and settled accounts with them. Then the one who had received the five talents came forward, bringing five more talents, saying, Master, you handed over to me five talents. See, I have made five more talents. His master said to him, Well done, good and trustworthy slave. 
you have been trustworthy in a few things. I will put you in charge of many things. Enter into the joy of your master. And the one with the two talents also came forward saying, Master, you handed over to me two talents. See, I have made two more talents. His master said to him, well done, good and trustworthy slave. You have been trustworthy in a few things. I will put you in charge of many things. Enter into the joy of your master. Then the one who had received the one talent also came forward saying, Master, I knew that you were a harsh man, reaping where you did not sow and gathering where you did not scatter seed. So I was afraid and I went and hid your talent in the ground. Here, you have what is yours. But his master replied, you wicked and lazy slave. You knew, did you, that I reap where I did not sow and gather where I did not scatter. Then you ought to have invested my money with the bankers. And on my return, I would have received what was my own with interest. So take the talent from him and give it to the one with the 10 talents. For to all those who have, more will be given and they will have an abundance. But from those who have nothing, even what they have will be taken away. As for this worthless slave, throw him into the outer darkness, where there will be weeping and gnashing of teeth. This is the gospel of the Lord. Praise, Praise to you, O oh Christ. So, at the, uh, I'll come to the uh, throwing out where there's weeping and gnashing of teeth in a moment. But first of all, um, I've got here eight spoons. I've got quite a few friends with ME or chronic fatigue syndrome um, of some kind or another. And from them, I've learned this spoons theory of life. Um, and the idea is that you've got a certain number of spoons each morning and different people start the day with different um, amounts of spoons. I've got eight here. Um, and, you know, getting up and getting dressed takes a spoon. Having a shower takes a spoon. Preparing and eating a healthy meal, um, rather than just grabbing something quick, might take two spoons. Reading a book or doing some productive work might take three spoons. Meeting a friend for coffee might take three spoons, but you've only got one left. So you have to make choices about where to put your energy. It seems to me that the, um, the parable we've got today is a bit like that. We've started off with eight spoons, eight bags of gold, eight talents in different translations. And five of those eight have been allocated to the one person, perhaps to one area of life in the story. And it does well, it's productive. If you give five of your eight spoons in the day to one part of your life, maybe it's your family, maybe it's your work, that bit's gonna go well. You're going to be pleased with the outcome. But you've only got three left. And say you choose to give two of the remaining three to another area of your life. Well, actually, that area might do pretty well as well. It won't be as productive as the one you gave five spoons to because you've only given two spoons to it. But you're pretty chuffed with the level of productivity you get from that area of your life. You're happy with the two spoons it returns to you. But then you've only got one spoon left for every other area of your life, for everything else. And with just one spoon, you can't do anything. You, you could get up and get dressed, or you could have a shower. You could open the emails and read them, but you'd have no energy left to respond to them. I think for many of us, when we read that story, and certainly when I was reading it um, in preparation for today, the bit that really jumps out is the, the master in the stories, really violent and aggressive reaction to the third servant. You wicked, lazy servant, take him out. He is worthless. Throw him outside where there will be weeping and gnashing of teeth. Throw him on the scrap heap, you useless pile of rubbish. And I was reflecting on where I've heard that kind of language, that tone of voice before. And it sounds very much to me like the tone of voice that we, certainly I, 
sometimes hear in my own internal dialogue. Hardly anyone in the real world speaks to me like that. But there's a voice internalized from moments uh, where parents perhaps spoke to us like that, from moments where teachers or a previous boss spoke to us like that, that we speak to ourselves like that. There's an awful lot of times when we speak to ourselves in a way that we wouldn't dream of speaking to a third person. I'm useless. I'm so worthless. I'm fit for nothing. Oh, I made a mess of that. I'm absolute rubbish. That is certainly something <laughs> that I find myself telling myself when I've messed up in an area uh, where I've not met my expectations or someone else's expectations. It may well be a voice that you recognize too. So what on earth does it mean when Jesus says the kingdom of heaven is like this story? Because on an initial reading, this sounds more like hell than heaven. In Luke 17, completely different gospel, completely different chapter, the Pharisees ask Jesus at what the signs of the coming kingdom will be. And Jesus says to them, the coming of the kingdom of God isn't something that can be observed. You can't say, here it is, or there it is, because the kingdom of God is in your midst. It's here and now. It's inside you, and it's in the spaces between us. The kingdom of God, Jesus says, is like this story. And the kingdom of God is something in the midst of us. It seems to me that we do have a tendency to blame those parts of our lives that feel unproductive and useless. And we wish we could cast them into outer darkness, onto the scrap heap. We feel how much better off we'd be without them. But maybe the problem isn't that those parts of our lives are letting us down or that we're letting everyone else down. Maybe the problem is that we're under-investing, or society is under-investing in some parts of our lives. Because poverty is expensive. If you've um, ever caught anything that Jack Munro has written in her Bootstrap Cook blog, um, you'll, you'll know what I'm talking about. You know, it can be expensive to eat when you've not got much money because you haven't got this store cupboard, you can't buy in bulk. And that's where I come to uh, today's second reading, if you like, the quotation from Terry Pratchett that I posted um, on the Facebook page earlier. This is Samuel Vimes, Boots Theory of Economics. Samuel Vimes is um, captain of the City Watch in the Terry Pratchett books. Take Boots, for example. He earned $38 a month plus allowances. A really good pair of leather boots cost $50, but an affordable pair of boots, which were sort of okay for a season or two and then leaked like hell when the cardboard gave out, cost about $10. Those were the kind of boots Samuel Vimes always bought and wore until the soles were so thin that he could tell where he was in Ankmore Pork on a foggy night by the feel of the cobbles. But the thing was that good boots lasted for years and years. A man who could afford $50 had a pair of boots that would still be keeping his feet dry in 10 years time. While a poor man who could only afford cheap boots would have spent $100 on boots in the same time and would still have wet feet. That was the Captain Samuel Vine's boots theory of economics. And we see this at all levels of society. If you give someone five spoons, five talents, five bags of gold, they're going to do well. And they're going to be really chuffed with themselves because they've done well, and they will believe it's because 
of meritocracy, not because of how many spoons they've been given in the life lottery. Give someone two spoons and they'll do fine. Give someone only one spoon and they'll struggle to do more than keep body and soul together. Just surviving with the spoon intact will be a great result. It will take a huge amount of effort. But as this story expresses, it doesn't tend to get treated as a great result, does it? We don't treat managing to keep body and soul together when you've started off with only one spoon as success. Like a government minister claiming it's easy to feed a family on a pound a day, it's so easy for us to assume that people or situations or areas of our own lives that seem to be failing are just not trying hard enough. Rather than admitting that it's about the uneven distribution of spoons. So if you give me five eighths of the available resources, I think I'll do quite well, thank you very much. Give me, give me two thirds of what's left and I'll probably manage okay. But expect me to cope on just the one spoon that's left on one eighth of what's available. And I'm gonna to struggle to do more than just keep my head above water. So, what is this kingdom of heaven like that's among us? Perhaps it's about opening our eyes to how we distribute the spoons. And it would be easy to make this about how terrible it is that the government don't distribute spoons properly um, and then feel quite smug about the fact that we've recognised that. So I want us to take it also as a personal challenge. We all have a finite number of spoons. That insight from people with ME and chronic fatigue, I think is hugely important for all of us. We all have a finite number of spoons. What if the areas, what, what areas of your life are you giving a disproportionate number of spoons to? What areas do you tend to hear that harsh, critical voice rejecting and telling you that you're rubbish at when you've never given it a chance because you've only ever given it the spoon that's left over after all the other spoons have been distributed. Are you making your happiness and your sense of self-worth dependent on over-investing in some areas of life? Are you beating yourself up with disappointment about lack of productivity, lack of results in an area of your life that there simply aren't enough spoons for? Are there parts of your inner life that you find yourself speaking to in this harsh, judgmental way, in this way that can't be the voice of God? And yet somehow from internalized abusive ideas of religion, from internalized harsh voices of parents or teachers or society, we've somehow given a divine weight to. Are there places in your life that you're tempted to reject, that it's easier to reject as failing? than to admit that you're disappointed in and try to give more investment to? Or that it's too difficult to accept that there just aren't enough spoons to go around? We all have a finite number of spoons. And when we hear the government criticizing the poor for not being successful enough, it's really easy to call them out on it. So let's take some of that defensive mama bear energy to look after those parts of our own lives that are impoverished. 
those parts of our own spirits that we tend to hear that inner voice shouting at. Maybe use this parable to call out your inner internalized master voice when you hear it put down part of you. We've only got a limited number of spoons in our own lives, a limited amount of energy. We need to choose where to put it. And we need to be kind where we recognize that lack of productivity is simply because there aren't enough spoons, both in society and in our own inner lives. Amen. Thank you, Miranda, that was wonderful. So reflecting on Miranda's sermon, let us bring our own inner harshness and an awareness of our own resourcing and the resourcing of the world before God in prayer. In the power of the Spirit and in union with Christ, let us pray to God. Almighty God, you promised us through your son, Jesus Christ, to hear us when we pray. We pray for our church. We pray that you strengthen Paul and Beverly, our bishops, and all your church in the service of Christ. That those who confess your name may be united in your truth, live together in your love and reveal your glory in the world. God, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Bless and guide all those in authority, internationally, nationally, and locally. Give them wisdom and direct our country and all countries and peoples around the world in the ways of justice and peace, that we may honor one another and seek the common good. God, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray that you give grace to us, our families, friends, all our neighbours and all those who we may call strangers. That we may all serve Christ in one another and love each other as he loves us. God, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Comfort and heal all those who suffer in mind, body, or spirit. We pray for the increasing numbers of COVID-19 cases in our community. We pray for the success of the rapid and mass testing trial going on in Liverpool at the moment. Give courage to all those who help to care for others all our NHS workers, care home workers. Give them courage and strength and bring them the joy of your salvation. God, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Hear us as we remember all those who have died in the faith of Christ. We thank you for your hope and according to your promises, grant us with them a share in your eternal kingdom. We give thanks for all those who have a ministry in the diocese for funerals and being alongside those who are grieving. We pray for all funeral directors and cemetery and crematorium staff. God, in your mercy, hear yeah. our prayer. Rejoicing in the fellowship of Our Lady and all your saints. We commend ourselves and the whole of creation to your unfailing love. Merciful God, accept these prayers for the sake of your Son, our Saviour, Jesus Christ. Amen. The risen Christ came and stood among his disciples and said, Peace be with you. 
So the peace of the risen Christ be always with you. And also with you. Peace be with you. Our communion is always a virtual reality. At the house in Emmaus, when Jesus broke the bread, his disciples realised his presence with them even as he vanished from their sight. When Thomas declared he would not believe unless he could touch and feel the wounds of the crucifixion, Jesus invited him to touch and see and declared a blessing on all those who would not see and yet would believe. At the ascension, angels asked the disciples why they looked up into the sky. They should expect now to find Jesus here in everyday places. We celebrate our communion strangely in this season. And yet our confidence and hope is in the God who is always both a virtual and a real presence. In bread, in wine, in water, in the spaces between us. The still centre at the heart of all our circling. Come living God, infuse our presence with your absence and our absence with your presence. Amen. Almighty God, you created the universe where all living things reflect your glory. You give us this great and beautiful earth to discover and to cherish. You made us all each wonderfully different to join with the angels and sing your praise. Holy, holy, holy Lord, Lord of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. On the night before he died, Jesus shared a meal with his friends. He took the bread. And he gave it to them, saying, take, eat. This is my body given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. After the meal, Jesus took the cup of wine. He thanked you and gave it to them saying, drink this, all of you. This is my blood, the new promise of God's unfailing love. Do this in remembrance of me. As we bring this bread and this wine and remember Jesus' death and resurrection, send your Holy Spirit that we may be fed by Christ's body and his blood. Pour out your Spirit on us that we may love one another work for the healing of the earth and share the good news of Jesus as we wait for his coming in glory. For all honour and praise belong to you, our divine source. With Jesus, your Son and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Amen. Let's pray with confidence in the words that Jesus taught us. Please use any version of the Lord's Prayer you enjoy using in any language. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. So now I'd like to invite you to share uh, communion wherever you are, and uh, we're going to share together as well.
So to our post communion prayer. May we who have shared in the reality of our communion without being physically present to one another, know the reality of your presence with us always. May we who are living in this time of brokenness and separation, know your wholeness in our hearts and in our communities. May we who hunger for a time when we may be together again, feed a hungry world for love and justice. Amen. Amen. So we come to our time of notices and uh, are there any notices? Um, the York Park Art Project and uh, the Lectio. Yes, yes so we have um, Advent courses coming up. Uh, we have uh, our Advent um, Lectio course with Mark that you need to sign up for on Eventbrite. And you can find more about it either through our Facebook page or on the Surprise website. And you can also find out about the um, art advent course, uh, which is called Searchlight. And that at the moment is just on our Facebook page, but will be going up um, onto the website soon. Uh, uh, Thursday, the quiz. Thursday, seven. we have our quiz and um, we need you need to email Dave Bradley about that. Again, that's on the St. Bride's website for more info. Uh, Miranda, do you know of any notices? Yes. I think that's everything. I'm just looking to see if anyone else is putting anything into the into the comments. There'll be another email coming out soon. Um, I suppose the Christmas Tree Festival, Laura, do you want to give people a quick update on that? Yes. Uh, right. So the Christmas Tree Festival is um, all going ahead. We've been sending out emails this week to participants. Um, the, the launch day um, to, for you to come and visit will be the tw Sunday, the 29th of November. But if you're involved, you should have got an email now. So do let me know if you haven't. Um, but the big sort of decorating day will be Saturday, the 28th of November. And any other details on that? Get making things. It's get, getting quite competitive. Open Table have been doing some spectacular work. Uh, so if you haven't started making, get excited, get making things, get creative. Can I, can I say, I mean, for the St Bride's Tree, fish are leading on it and we're asking everybody, um, please, so this is for all of you, if you could draw around your hand um, and then on, either cut it out or just send it to us as a piece of paper, um, draw around your hand and then on the shape that you've created, either draw a character from the nativity story, it could be an angel, could be a star, could be a nativity scene, whatever you like, um, or write one of your favourite quotes, um, perhaps rather beautifully, and then send that to um, to me at home or, um, or drop off at church um, in the next week or so. And then we're going to laminate them and hang them on the Christmas tree so that hopefully everybody's hands will be represented on the tree. And as people are looking at them, they'll be drawn into the Christmas story from lots of different people's perspectives. Lovely. Thank you. Yes, that's a really important one. We need lots of hands. I've done a sparkly glittery one to represent the glory of the angels and then coming out of the darkness on the other side of it, I've painted it black. So oh. make of that what you will. But uh, yeah, go, go for it. Get creative. OK, I think that's I think that's everything. Um, and uh, we're going to say now then our blessing prayer and then Louis is going to end with our final prayer. The peace of God, which passes all understanding, keep your hearts and minds in the knowledge and love of God. And the blessing of God, the womb of creation, the word of life and the wind of change, be upon you and rest upon your home, now and always. Amen. Amen. So we rejoice in our fellowship, and our fellowship with Our Lady and Saint Michael and all the saints, as we pray. In the circle of God's love, we are one. The circle is never broken. In the light of God's welcome, we are one. The light never goes out. May children teach us the wisdom of play. May neighbours teach us the gentleness of care. May the circle surround us when we are apart. 
may the light draw us together again. Amen. So thank well, you for joining us. And uh, let's off the mail. Thanks so um, much, Laura um, and Louis. And um, there will be Zoom coffee. Oh, my cat's come to join us. Hello, everyone from my cat. Um, there will be Zoom coffee after this. Um, I can't post the link at the moment because I can't post a link to another Zoom while I'm on Zoom, weirdly. Um, but um, the normal link, which is pinned to the Facebook page. So I'll see you in a moment. Do you want to get yourselves a cup of tea and then come and say hello to people if you'd like to do that? Bye. Thank you, everyone. Bye. 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 Bye.